Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a get ready with me trying out new products as well as a life update. I want to say first with the trying out new products part, I have things that are high end and more affordable. I'm going to be testing out the Givenchy foundation. I'm going to be trying out the Koki Cosmetics bronzers. I'm using Stelazi and my collection on my lips. I'm using ColourPop on my eyes. Oh, I have the new NARS palette that I promised you guys testing this baby out. What is it called? I keep forgetting. I want to call the this and the eyeshadow palette the afterglow, but it's it's not. The eyeshadow palette is afterglow and this is over lust. So you will see this in action as well as a Rimmel liner, a makeup revolution mascara, just a lot of different things. So if you want to see this look, keep watching. But I also want to mention that this life update is a little on the sad side. I don't want to dampen anyone's spirit. I just felt like I needed to get this out and speak about it and maybe it wouldn't weigh on me so much because I've been dealing with things for quite a while now and it kind of just, whew, I needed to take a breather and I, I just felt like I needed to talk about it. So I want to forewarn you that I cry in this video. If you don't want to see something like that, you don't want to be, you know, emotional or anything. Like that, I don't, I, it's totally fine. You can click out. If you're wondering when that point is, I tell you before it happens. So if you want to just skip past it, but I am definitely doing just like a little life update, things that are going on in my life and, you know, the bad part along with, you know, some good, happy things. But anywho, let's go ahead and try on some new makeup. For a foundation, I'm going to go in with a new one from Givenchy. This is the Tint Couture Everywhere. I decided not to buy this, even though I had a lot of requests for reviews on this, because mainly the color range, the color range is kind of terrible. Like if you look, this is the color range. All these look exactly the same, and then you have two darker shades, which kind of also look exactly the same whenever you're looking at this range. So I opted not to buy it, but I've got this little sample pack. So I'm going to try it out for you guys. And they only have a pink and yellow undertones. They don't have anything neutral, which is usually what I like to do. So I'm kind of I've been sitting here holding this up to my chin, trying to decide between the pink or the yellow. But what I'm going to do is just pull this out and kind of do a little test on the side of my face. This one is the P100 there, and then the Y200. Mm, I almost kind of want to mix them together. I think that the pink is going to be too light for me, so I'm just going to go with the Y200 and just call it a day. BK Beauty 106. This is the brush that I have been raving about. I'm just going to dot this all over and then I'm going to start blending it in. It does have a fragrance to it. I don't think that it's overpowering. It does smell good. But if you don't like fragrances, I don't think that you'll like the fragrance in this. To me, it smells kind of fresh. And this is gliding onto my skin very nicely. I'm not wearing any primers on my face, on the outskirts of my face. I always wear my pore primers, which are listed down below. But I don't on the rest of my face whenever I'm trying out a foundation the first time. Tap this in. One layer of this, I get a nice medium coverage. I feel like it looks kind of like a satin type of finish. It's not matte, but it's also not dewy. My pores, everything look good. And the yellow isn't too bad. Uh, if it changes and it oxidizes and it goes just a little bit more yellow, I won't be able to tolerate it. But right now, it's not too yellow, but we'll see what happens later on. Now I'm going to go in with my color corrector, and this is from Charlotte Tilbury, the Magic Vanish Color Corrector. I use the shade number two medium. 
and I'm going in with the Milk Makeup and Sephora Collection. This is the concealer brush, and I'm going to pop this right here to help hide this dark area. And I'm just pressing this in. I found that I really like this brush for this application of this product. Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer number five. This is on its last leg. I need to open up my new one. <laughs> I'm just trying to get every little bit out of it that I possibly can. I'm like scraping the sides at this point. Sonia Kashuk Little Sponge. I'm just gonna press this in and blend it out. Huda Beauty Baking Powder Pound Cake. I'm gonna start on my pores and then work up to set underneath my eyes. To set the rest of my face, I'm gonna go in with one of my favorite powders of all time, but I don't use it on camera a ton. This is the La Prairie Skin Caviar Powder, and I'm going to use a BK Beauty, what number are you, 104. I'm just gonna take this and tap it into the skin. I do feel like this foundation is getting a little bit more yellow and this powder is not yellow. It's like a mm, natural type of color. It's technically translucent, but they have three different shades. I use the middle shade. I don't have any extra product on my brush. I'm just making sure that everything is really nice and pressed in. I'm going to use this brush and sweep away the rest of that underneath my eyes. And then to set my nose, I'm going to use the same powder, but I'm just using a different brush. This is really small. It's a mini cheek from Sonia G, the Sky Set. And I'm just going to dust this all over my nose. This is the point where I usually put on my Tatcha Camilla Gold Spun Lip Balm. However, I have a new one that was sent to me from Ciate. And this is the Watermelon Burst Hydrating Lip Oil. So I just want to give this a little try. This is what the packaging looks like. And it's just got one of those little, you know, slanted applicators. Ooh, it's glossy. It, it's already reminding me of a Jolly Rancher. I'm gonna do my eyes before I do the rest of my face and I'm gonna use the ColourPop Truly Madly Deeply Palette. I've had this for a little while but I just haven't had the time to review it or use it. And I thought today would be the perfect day. So this is the palette I'm going to use. I'm going to bake underneath my eyes to catch any type of fallout. I already have my eyes primed with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer. And I'm going to zoom you guys in. Scott Barnes, number 62 in the shade Made to Last. All right, so we're about to get into some life stuff. If you don't want to hear anything depressing, I would suggest just skipping the eye look or putting it on mute and watching, you know, do something like that because I'm just forewarning you that the things I have to talk about, like I have, I have a, my stomach just feels like it's in knots thinking about talking about it. I'm just not one of those people that usually will reach out, say anything. I'm really good about hiding feelings. I'm that type of girl. But anyway, I feel like I also need to get this off of my chest. And I think that maybe the eyeshadow will distract me from crying. Um, hopefully. Uh, I am putting this on the outer V and also bringing it up into the crease as my transition area. As my transition, my transition shade. So I posted recently that um, I needed to take a little bit of a break. And I had some family stuff and it wasn't my story to tell, yada yada. I am so glad I took those few days off because I snapped on somebody. 
and I, that's not how I usually do things. I'm not somebody who just uh, kind of freaks out. <laughs> I try to keep calm, um, but I got I got mad. I got really angry, and I absolutely flipped out on this person. And I feel so guilty about it to this day. And I know why I did it. I know why. Like it's just I feel like I have so much pressure on me right now, and so many things going on that. I just, it was the straw that broke the camel's back and I feel terrible to this person. If you're watching this, you know, I've already apologized, but you know, I just want to apologize again for losing my cool. Using the same brush, I'm going to grab the shade Cutouts. I'm again going to start this shade right on the outer corner and then bring it into the crease. So what I was talking about in that particular um, community page comment that I put up about my break is that my mom has cancer. I've known about this since um, the summer. I don't know. It was before June. I, I feel like it was before June because uh, another thing that happened. There's just been a whole lot of death around me and um, my mom having cancer is scaring, scaring me to death, <laughs> figuratively, obviously. Before I get into all of that, I kind of want to put this whole story into play. And it's just a lot. So I really don't blame you guys if you want to skip ahead. I kind of just feel like I want to get it off of my chest out there. You guys know about it. So if I'm not responding to comments or I'm taking you know, just time to myself. Sometimes I've just been going out with my mom and enjoying time with her and, you know, I don't respond as much or I might not post as much even on, you know, Instagram. I still feel like I'm doing a pretty good job, but I think I'm also putting too much on myself. Anywho, 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 I don't want you guys to feel like <laughs> you guys are making me do anything or anything like that. I'm not, you know, it's not like that at all. I take time whenever I need it. In June, my He's not my biological father, but he raised me for a very good portion of my life um, and a, a portion that I really needed him. And I've had a close relationship with him and I called him Santa. On my Instagram, you will see there's a hummingbird and a Santa hat. And it's because I called him Santa since I was 16. And, um, I got a call. Give me a second. I got a call from my mama. So it's mama and Santa in uh, another state. Not my biological parents, but, you know, uh, they're my family. She tells me, you know, he had been sick, but he's been sick for years. And uh, he, I think it was a brain aneurysm or something. I can't even think straight right now to be able to tell you exactly what happened. And I immediately left the state, went down, and I was able to tell him goodbye before they took him off life support. At this point, I already knew that my mom had cancer, but, you know, it was kind of hopeful. Uh, another thing to know about my mom, and I asked her before I did this video, she knows that I'm going to talk about it, and she said that uh, she thought that I should. So just so you guys know, I said it wasn't my story to tell, but you know, she gave me permission and she was completely okay with it. And my mom isn't somebody that would say it's okay when it's really not. So she also has Addison's disease. There's two different types of Addison's and she has the bad kind. So she's having trouble with chemo because when you have an autoimmune disease and you're trying to do chemo, you know, you just, you can't go as aggressively with it. And there was a time where the cancer got worse. And then it's, one side got worse, one side got better. And then we recently found out that she has a brain tumor and uh, they can't do everything at once. So we're just kind of waiting on that, watching that and targeting the thing that we know is cancer right now. I don't know if the uh, brain tumor is cancerous or not. Esum W21 and jackpot. I'm going to start tapping this on the outer portion of the eye. Going back to Santa, 
Christmas has been hard. So I know, you know, what's going on with my mom, but then I also, you see Santa's everywhere and you see the Santa hats and that's been really, really hard. This is my first Christmas without him in my life. It's just really, it's really, really hard. How everything happened was really hard. It was right after Father's Day and uh, he, I had left him a message. I didn't, I didn't even get to talk to him. I didn't get a call back and then, you know, sometimes he just gets busy, you know, whatever. I just didn't think twice about it. And then the next thing you know, I think it was the next day. It was the next day or two. I feel like it was the next day. I don't remember. Um, I got a call. And I, yeah, I ran down there as quickly as I could in my car. Messed up my car in the process. <laughs> and uh, that was no big deal. You know, that stuff can be fixed. But I did get to tell him goodbye. A week later, I took my kids to Beach Bend Park in Kentucky. And I watched as an SUV collided with another, uh, it was a tractor trailer, not a tractor trailer, a okay, um, farm tractor, but huge one, agricultural, agricultural tractor, huge one. I don't even know, she had to have been looking down doing something because it was two different lanes and, you know, you know, two lanes on this side, two lanes on this side, the median. And I, I just, I don't know how it happened. I just remember saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then they twist and I see the tractor is upside down. The SUV flips and I'm thinking she's going to be okay. Cause this is a brand new, brand spanking new Tahoe. And I get, I'm the first one on the scene. I've got 911, you know, <laughs> When this happens, you forget how to even dial 911. I, I shoot. And I, you know, I'm panicking and I can't, I can't see anything inside because every single airbag in this huge Tahoe has deployed every single one of them front to back, you know, open up the door and the window is all busted. Uh, the window, it's just shattered. And another man comes up and he, you know, he, He's trying to help me get it open, and I tell him, you know, I've got, uh, I've got nine one one on the phone. Same brush in the shade Blossom. We get the door open. There's a woman in the car, and she's gone. She's just gone. So I just watched somebody pass away, and I, I'm crying. My kids are all in the car, obviously, because I was taking them to Beach Bend Park through all of the airbags, we were able to see that there was a child seat, like a baby seat in the back. Luckily, no baby, and not because they were ejected or anything like that. The baby wasn't in the car and, you know, small things to be grateful for. We go to check on the man. The tractor is not on him, but he's having trouble getting out. So we had to help him get out. And by this time, there's a, a, a couple more cars. There's a lot of cars stopped back behind him the wreck, uh, but there's people that helped. And I was grabbing my kids beach towels to help because he had this huge gash in his head. And um, I remember him asking me specifically, is the driver okay? And I just said, she's gone. And he said, what? She left the scene? And I said, never mind. And then he put two and two together. Refer P21, matter of fact, I actually skipped something and I want to skirt back just a, for a second. So when we got back from the other state to see Santa, uh, we came in, we pulled into our driveway and there was, you know, I didn't see any other dogs or anything like that. And I came in, we had Charlie with us and then my neighbor was watching Diesel. Charlie is a, just a little party Yorkie. She's just a spitball of fire and... I get outside and there is a pit bull that had just given birth. You could tell, you know, uh, the stomach and then all the little nipples and whatnot. I didn't want Charlie to go running after this dog because I had, for the first time, I had not had her on a leash. I was just walking her outside and I was going to take her back in. I live like in the woods. It's no big deal. And I 
saw this dog, I grabbed Charlie really quickly and I ran it off. I don't, I don't know if somebody dropped it off. I've never seen this dog before. I know it's none of my neighbor's dogs. Uh, I ran it off. And then when I go to take Diesel out, I hear this crying and that dog had been hit by a car and I lost my mind. Of course, the dog passed away and I just sat there and I was like, what the hell? You know, I just lost Santa. I just told, you know, had to say bye to him. I know what's going on with my mom and I'm just watching, you know, this poor animal that I, I did that felt so guilty. Like it was my fault because I just ran it off and then it went into the road and got hit. And I just, I felt so guilty. Same brush and sweet dreams. My husband tried to console me, Puffin. And I just, I was just unconsolable. Obviously, it was the dog and, and Santa. I just, I couldn't handle it. And then I kept thinking about my mom. Anywho, so I've had all these things happen. And then, while I was out of town, a client of mine and a friend of mine that I met through working at Nordstrom I get a message that she is in hospice and she passed away and I I wasn't in town when this happened and uh I would have been there if I could but I you know I couldn't and uh, my friend that was there gave her a message for me tugged her hand and my friend squeezed back so I think that she knew what I was saying or what I had, the message I had relayed. At least I am hopeful for that. ESMW21 and Indio, but she, my friend, passed away from cancer. She made me feel so normal. She never talked about her illness. I, I knew something was going on, but I also knew how it felt to talk about it, you know, with my knee, which is not cancer. I I knew how it felt to just always have somebody, what's wrong with you? Why are you limping? You know, this or that. You just kind of want to be normal. And I wanted her to feel normal. So when I was with her, we didn't talk about my knee. We didn't talk about her. We talked about makeup and the fun stuff, you know? <laughs> and she's gone. And because it's cancer that she's gone from, I'm so scared with my mom. I am just going to have to fix this. Thank goodness for the bake, because that does help uh, keep it from actually ruining the concealer. I mean, it's probably going to make it a little greasy, but it's okay. I'll just put some powder up top. I know a lot of you guys know that I sprain my shoulder and my knee. My knee is getting much better, so that is positive. Something I am very happy about because I was really scared that I had really, really messed it up. So that's good news that my knee is getting better. My shoulder is just, we're trying, we're trying. And then I just found out that I have a condition, nothing major, but it's something that I have been trying to get diagnosed for a very long time. It has to do with my blood pressure and my heart and things like that. Uh, I have very, very, very low blood pressure. I will faint. I am getting hemiplegic migraines. If you guys have heard of that, I had never heard of it before. So I'm on a medication for the migraines that actually really does help. I have used several different things before for just regular migraines like Imitrex and things like that and uh, nothing's worked but I'm taking this shot now and it is really helping me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say on camera what that is so just message me <laughs> and I'll tell you but it's definitely helping. Now I have to take something else for this other condition and I'm not reacting well with it. It's making my head hurt. Not a migraine, but it's making my head hurt. It's making me feel sick. Hopefully, in the end, it makes me feel better with the condition. But it's just all of these things all at one time. And I'm so worried about my mom. 
so this is what's going on in my life and this is why if I don't respond to you guys if I'm not as interactive on certain videos I've it's not like me to just completely not answer comments or even look at them but I have done it recently I hate that I have been doing that but I'm again so glad that I took a few days to just decompress and start back over I feel better I think that if I had done this video yeah I'd, obviously I cried but I think that if I had done this video a few days ago I would have had a full-on meltdown uh, so yeah but this is my life update portion of the video I'm gonna stop now you guys get the drift you guys know what's going on Refer number 14 and made to last. I am going to take this right along the lower lash line. I'm just going to leave this other side alone completely and I'm going to finish it off camera because this I can feel that it's still wet and I want it to dry down before I even mess with it. Same brush and the shade cut outs. I keep saying call outs. I am going to take this right underneath the lower lash line as well. I actually also have a new eyeliner. This is from Rimmel. It was sent to me. It's the Scandalize Micro Eyeliner. So I'm going to use this and do just right at the top part of my lashes right back here. Let's see how this works over top of glitter. I'm not bringing this all the way to the inner corner. I just want it right up against my lash line. on the outer portion. Please forgive me, you guys, I messed up. <laughs> and I didn't even realize I had messed up until halfway into doing my mascara and then my uh, camera turned off. I thought I hit record and I didn't. And by that time I was already like halfway through doing my mascara. So I said, forget it, I'm just gonna finish it and show you guys the results. This really looks great in my opinion. And it's from Makeup Revolution. They sent this one and the waterproof version. This one is the Mascara Revolution. And this is what the wand looks like. You're getting a lot of product on the wand and you're getting a lot of volume out of this. So far, I'm liking it. It kind of reminds me of like the Lancome Monsieur Big, which is like a little bit more wet than that, but not too wet to where it like makes your uh, lashes clump together or anything like that. I'm liking the way that this looks. I will see if it starts falling all down my face. Now let's move on to the face. Actually, you know what, because I didn't show you guys the mascara, I'm going to tell you what I did to get rid of this. You know, you saw that really messed up spot. When I wiped away my bake, I had that area that turned kind of white where I had teared up right there. It basically made the powder stay in place, kind of like what a setting powder would do. So all I did in case this ever happens to you, I took my little sponge, wiped off any excess powder that was on it, and then my spray. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Mist. I sprayed my sponge like this, and then I made sure it was not wet, but a little bit more than just damp. And I went right in and that kind of melted the powder back into my skin. And I had to do it two times because right up against the lash line, it still wanted to be a little bit white. So I had to do it again. And then because it kind of alters the way everything looks underneath your eyes, I took my Sicily powder. You can use whatever powder you like underneath your eyes. I would just suggest a tinted one because it helps with anything that can, you know, that white type of residue. I took this powder and I took my brush from Royal and Langnickel. This is the BOM 41 Dome Shader. I took it and I just pressed this powder all over and it, boom, we're good again. <laughs> so that's kind of why I told this story during my eye makeup and you would think that's probably the last thing you would want to do but I felt like if I had already done my eye makeup and then my face I knew I'm a, I'm a, I'm a crier I'm a crier I just do so I knew that my mascara was going to be down my face my makeup could be messed up this was going to be the easiest way to tell you oh and if you're looking at this I'm sorry I 
no one should ever allow me to use a knife and open up a package. All right, let's go on to the face. Koki Cosmetics sent over their brand new bronzers. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but I'm going to show you each of the colors. The first one is Sunlit Peach. This one right here. This is Heat Wave. Definitely much darker, so this one is not going to work for me. Another darker one, this is Soul Tan. This is much deeper. Let me swatch these two on my finger so you guys can see. This one right here is the first one, Heat Wave, and then Soul Tan. You can see how dark that is. The last one is Stay Golden. I think this is the one I want to use, but I'm going to put it right up beside this one. Just kind of look in the mirror. Yeah, it is going to be this one for me. Sonia G Master Face. Start buffing this into the skin. Ooh, I like this color. It's not too dark. It's warm, but not orange. I like it. I like it so far. It's blending out very easily. I did not even think to check the ingredients in this. I really hope it doesn't have cornstarch. God, I don't know why I do that. Sometimes I'm really, really good about checking ingredients, and then other times I will even buy things without looking and then realize whenever I get it home that, uh, yeah, it has it in there. Or Z maze, that's another term for it. I just checked, there's no Z maze or cornstarch, so we are good. Taking a little bit of this and adding it to my nose because I don't feel like it's too orange. A lot of times I can't use a bronzer on my nose, but I think I can with this one. I think I can. I think I can. Another thing with my mom, I don't think that she is going to see this video before Christmas. I don't think. Her present is going to be given to her on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I had taken her out to eat. And um, I have that little Louis Vuitton mini pochette, whatever. She really likes that bag. And uh, she said, I don't think I'll ever have a bag like that. And I'm a gifter. I am such a gifter. And I'm really excited because I got her. I didn't get her the same exact bag. I got her a different one because I know that she carries more things than what I do and stuff like that. But I'm really excited because I got her her first Louis bag and I don't know I'm just I'm really excited for her to open it up and I know like some of you guys will be like oh it's not about the gift or this or that's about time trust me I'm spending time with my mom I know it's not about that but I also know that she's going to smile when she sees that bag and she, I know she didn't make the comment thinking that I would do anything like that uh, I'm just I'm excited I'm really excited for her to have it as promised, I said that I would use the new NARS palette in my next Get Ready With Me, and this is the Overlust Cheek Palette. So I just did a review on the Afterglow Eyeshadow Palette. Love that. And now we're going to test out this one. The eye palette is more of an orange type of look, the same type of packaging, but it's orange, and this one is pink. Ooh, I love it. And you open it up. This one's definitely lighter than I think I've ever seen them do. I don't, I can't remember them ever doing anything like this, this light. So I'm excited about it. For blush, this looks stunning. So I want to try out the shade first. I'm sitting here reading the names, tied up, deep down, drift, let it burn, get lost, and body talk. I don't know those names. So I'm, I think this could be a palette that has all new brand new shades in it which is cool I'm not certain because obviously I don't know every single shade that is from NARS but I don't remember these and there's no Laguna no NARS and this just looks totally revamped all of these up here are a shimmer definitely a highlight for me and then these are all matte so I'm taking this shade right here on my Sonia G cheek pro cheek pro oh yeah it's really light and natural. And again, if you're wondering what skin tone I am, like an NC27 right now. <laughs> or, you know, you could compare it to that Givenchy foundation. 
Oh, I love this color. It's so pretty. Before I highlight, I'm going to quickly just finger swatch these shades. The pink one, the middle one, and then this one. That is what they look like. Oh, they're so pretty. To highlight, I'm going to take this last shade in the top row on a Stelazi L302. This one's definitely more on the natural side. Linda Hallberg 306, I'm going to take the lightest shade. I'm going to pinpoint this right on the very top of my cheekbone right here. Again, that brightened it up just a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this on my forehead. Nose and chin. Ooh, a little too much. I have a new brush I want to try out, and it's from Wayne Goss. I wait all year for this. This is his new 2019 holiday brush, just as soft as you would expect. It's a large fan brush, but it's not too thick, like you see. I'm going to use this to buff with, and I'm going to use my Sicily powder. I thought about using this to do like my uh, bronzer or whatever, but I didn't want to be using a new brush and a new bronzer because some, if something goes wrong, I don't know if it's the brush or if it's the bronzer. This is so soft. Seriously, so soft. I ran out of two products today. I just went through another one of my Milk Boss liners. By the way, I put that on my top inner rim. And this powder is now gone. It is time for an outfit change. I will be right back. I am back and I want to quickly mention these earrings. These are some of the earrings that I was talking about in one of my last videos. I talked about my jewelry collection. If you haven't uh, seen that, definitely check it out. But these are from Raven Stone and I just, I love their jewelry. I have so many more pieces that I got and I, I just think that they are so cool. If you saw the B earrings that I was wearing or the ones that have this shape and then like the black onyx, amazing. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my lips. I went ahead and took a kitten liner from my collaboration with Christian Audet and I went right around the edges, but I want to also fill it in. The funniest thing happens now all the time. I think I'm just out a little bit more than what I traditionally am. And uh, I have to carry around this liner and my beauty lipstick, just a separate one, because people ask what it is. I tell them, and a lot of them, you know, haven't heard of Christian Audette before, which I'm happy to oblige. So I showed them I will take a liner, a, an extra kitten and an extra beauty, and I show them the liner and the lipstick and then i come home and i like clean it with alcohol but <laughs> so many people have been like oh my gosh i can't get the liner off of my hand i'm like yes <laughs> and then i have to show them how to get onto the website for christian audit it's so neat it is it's so crazy to just be like oh yeah this is my lipstick and sometimes they're like oh you have your own line like no <laughs> Sorry guys, package delivery. As I was saying, uh, <laughs> I've just been carrying these around and I have to get on there and I show them you know, where they can purchase it because they think that I have my own line. I'm like, no, I just have my own collaboration which is just as special. And I love seeing them trying to get the liner off of their hands. It just makes me so happy. Now I'm gonna go in with Beauty Lipstick right on top. Uh, this is my favorite combo. I've gotten asked if people people will be like, are you tired of wearing that? Uh, no, no, not at all. Because I can deepen it up with smooches. And I can also, obviously I have the orange, which can be turned into a red. I feel like I have options to wear. And this is my favorite go-to nude. So am I bored of it? Absolutely not. And it's such a good formula. How can I be mad about that? I can't be mad about that. <laughs> Another update. I want to talk about my thumbs. So I have 
I finished my back. If I can get someone to take a picture of my back, I will show you guys how it is finished up. There's still more room that I could technically add to it, but I kind of like it how it is. Right now, it's uh, where before there was a spot missing right here, and all you could see was the ram skull hole. H hole. Oh my gosh. I said that because my little, <laughs> my spike went through the hole, hole in my shirt. Anywho, as I was saying, I got it finished for now and I'm going to insert a picture if I can get a picture taken. And then I went ahead and did this as well, which is 1023. I'm going to have to do it like this. This is 1023. That is Huffin and I's anniversary. I just wanted to add it on and I did it in red because I didn't want it to be black and then have, you know, lipstick and then the 10 and the 23 felt like it would just all merge together. So there's another little update and I have some one other thing that I want to put on my lips. This is from Stilazi. I love this combo by itself. Absolutely love it. However, sometimes I like to put a gloss on top because I love a glossy lip. And I haven't tried this yet. This was sent to me as well. This is Pink Sand Lip Finish. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish my lip. I like that it's not altering the color of my lipstick. Mm. Smells good and it's not sticky. Very nice, very, very nice. And this is the finished look. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through each of the products and I'll tell you guys what I think about them. Starting off with the foundation. I think the foundation looks beautiful on my skin. I'm not mad at the color. I really thought I was going to be, but I think that after I buffed, after everything was said and done, it doesn't look as yellow as I felt like it was turning. <laughs> I do think that it was turning and deepening up just a little bit as I was filming. I don't know if you guys could see that or not, but I feel like I could see it. But after I buffed and everything is done, I feel like it looks really nice. I'll try to remember to leave a little comment down below on how well it lasts, as well as the mascara as to whether or not it flakes. But with the foundation, I really do like the way that it looks on my skin. I really think it looks fabulous. My only complaint with the foundation is the shade range. It's just there's a whole lot of the same color. And I know not every brand is going to put out, you know, 30 or 40 different shades, but I just feel like... This is very lackluster. Just my two cents on my skin. It looks nice. Uh, what was the next thing we used? Ooh, the palette. I'm in love. I'm so mad that I didn't use this before now. I knew I wanted this palette, but yeah, this is pretty right here. It has my colors in it. I love the purples. I love the little bit of cool tone you have in here. I love the coral. I like glitter shadows, but that's just me. Some people don't. If you don't, be aware that these three right here are glitter shades. So this first impression, beautiful. I really like the look that I got out of it. The Rimmel Scandalize Micro Eyeliner. This very nice as well. It even went on top of the glitter, which not all liners do. Some of them are just kind of funky and they don't work. I feel like it's very black. It went on well. I am happy with this. I'm really happy with the mascara. I love the way that this looks. It's again, I'm just going to have to leave down below whether or not it smudges or if it flakes. To me personally, if I get a little bit of flaking, I don't mind just doing this. I just have to know whether or not the, that type of formula does so I can check on it. But I don't like something that's overly flaky, if that makes sense. I feel like I say that all the time. Kelsey is always saying, like, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> all right, Koki and their matte bronzers. I think they did a great selection with the four different shades. This is a perfect example of only having four shades but doing a really good job. I would say that really the only thing that they're missing is something that's going to be a little bit lighter for fair skin tones. But I still think that you would probably be able to use this one. It's not too orange. I think that it blended out really well. I like the way it looks on my skin. So this, great job. And the pan size, how much are you getting in here? Because the pan is huge. You're getting 17 grams. 
Wow. Yeah. Yes, Koki. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, all right. Now we're going to move on to NARS. I love this. Okay. I, it, I think it's going to replace this one. And I know this is new and I really love this palette. So, okay. This one is going to be for fair to light medium. I consider myself to be a light medium. I know right now I look a little bit lighter. If you go on my Instagram, you can see me in darker lighting. Um, let me insert a picture. I'm gonna insert a picture right now. This is a recent quote unquote modeling shoot. I'm not a model, I'm just a little wannabe. You can see my true skin color in that picture. And this works for me, but it's going to work for somebody lighter than that. I. I'm obsessed with this already. I'm going to grab for this color a ton because it's literally just natural and neutral. So happy with it. The highlight is definitely more on the natural side. So if you're looking for something that's going to have a blingy highlight in there, you're gonna have to work to make that one blingy. It's, it's not gonna be straight out the gate. But if you are somebody who likes, okay, these stupid palettes, <laughs> I can never get them open. I have to take something and open them. This one's going to be better suited for more of a wider range of skin tones. This one, the new one, is definitely for lighter skin tones. Um, what else? Ooh, I forgot. I wanted to do this. I already know how I feel about this. The House of Siage, the Aeronauts, I posted this on Instagram. They have a new lip case. So this is limited edition, and you guys know how I feel about the cases. I absolutely love them. So I want to show you the case really quickly, but then I'm going to spray the perfume. Look, look at it. It's so pretty. Oh, I wish I, I need a necklace and you better believe I would wear it. If I had a choker that was like this, I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. So this is the newest addition to my collection. Thank you to House of Siage. And then I have the parfum. <laughs> this is what the box looks like. And then the fragrance and I want to spray myself I, I'm try and I'll try to explain it the best that I can so click it over most fun most fun give yourself a little spritz okay so I like slightly more masculine scents this is warm I'm terrible at describing scents I'm gonna leave the notes right here but it's very warm and I really like this one. Still the Christian Cohen or Cowan, whichever way you say it. That one's still my favorite, but I have been reaching for this because this is just my type of fragrance. I have been really enjoying their fragrance. So I wanted to mention that in this video. What else? I know there's more. Okay, ah, the lip oil from Ciate. This feels very, very nice. I think I'm gonna stick with my Tatcha when it comes to prepping my lips. This is something I will definitely throw in my purse. Again, it smells like Jolly Ranchers to me, and it feels very nice on the lips, and it gives a slight, slight pink hue, which I like. If you have darker lips than myself, it's probably just going to look clear. I feel like my lips are pretty fair, so you, I, anything gives them color. I will keep this in my purse purse because I do like that. And this brush from Wayne Goss, Wayne Goss just doesn't disappoint. Do you see? It's just so soft. Uh, it's so nice. It is so nice. I know that whenever he brings something out, I'm just, I'm going to get it. It's, it's said and done. And this is, I'm so glad I've got it. I'm so glad I've got it. And lastly, we have this Delazi pink sand lip finish. Again, you already, I think you already know how I feel about it. It's not sticky. I like the way it looks. It's, I think that if you wear this by itself, let me swatch it for you. It's not gonna have a lot of color to it. It's kind of a champagne type of pink, if you can see it. Not a lot of color. It has some shimmer to it, but it's not intense. Just gives you just a little something something and I love it on top of my my combo right here it's beautiful I really like the entire look I like everything that I tried which doesn't always happen sometimes I try something I'm like oh it didn't work out but this look I am feeling anywho I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you guys in my next one bye guys